Good afternoon. I'm Christopher Davey. I'm the Senior Director of Solution Architecture at WSO2. And today I'm going to give you a brief overview of uh, the multi-tenancy capabilities with API management uh, to set the scene for the, the next speaker that's going to go into how that affects the sort of open banking, open finance um, space. So uh, if we just look at how uh, an organization view of uh, API management work. So if you look at open banking, um, lots of the financial institutions are looking to expose uh, their APIs and the standard process of doing that is you create, publish, you get your third party developers or internal developers to subscribe to those APIs and then you can have your end, end uh, customers uh, call and utilize those services that you've exposed. Uh, now each Organization will have a slightly different approach to that, a different um, standards, uh, different um, authentication, etc. Uh, now, you know, obviously they follow the standard regulations, but there's still variation in how those systems and services are exposed uh, and consumed. Uh, the setup here will be each organization would have their own implementation of an API manager um, and they would manage it separately and they would. Um, connect to their own uh, systems and services. So if we look in a multi-tenant view of that, the organization still have the ability to have a slightly customized view. They can still uh, expose their own systems and services. They can still follow their own standards as far as any regulations will allow. But actually the core capabilities are being provided by a centralized platform. So that create, publish, subscribe, uh, process is running on a shared infrastructure that uh, all the tenants and organizations that are set up can utilize. So that's going to give a number of advantages uh, in the sort of finance space and for smaller entities. As I say the next speak will go into a bit more detail of that. So within uh, a multi tenant setup, obviously, as I mentioned, you get the shared infrastructure. Each tenant can connect to their own systems and services or uh, in certain circumstances, they can also connect and expose shared services. Each tenant will expose separate APIs uh, and they will be published into their own store, which is controlled and accessed uh, by the subscribers. And, you know, just because you're subscribed to one tenant doesn't mean you have access to the others. So there's a good, clear separation there. Um, you also get an individual look and feel. So people visiting each tenant store will think they're uh, experiencing a a different uh, a, a different organization um, because there's full capabilities to theme uh, your own store behind the scenes there's clear data separation so there's no danger of each tenant being able to access other tenants data uh, they only get access uh, and uh, can expose and utilize their own configurations and their own data within the tenant and also gives them the ability to do some individual security and authentication on a per tenant basis. So they can have separate user stores and separate uh, capabilities in that space as well. So the sort of use cases we're looking at at a high level here are a corporate, so you take a corporate group that has multiple entities uh, all around the globe, but they want a centralized platform to manage their API process and manage their APIs. So each entity gains a level of autonomy and can manage their API process using this centralized platform that's set up and maintained by the core corporate group. Another option is you get a service provider uh, in the uh, finance or any other space um, that runs a core platform that allows other uh, customers and other entities to subscribe uh, and uh, utilize those capabilities so that they can host and expose their own APIs using that core, core platform, gaining the ability uh, benefits and um, capabilities of that single shared platform. So, as I said, um, the next speaker, Jonathan, is going to go into a little bit more detail around the benefits and how that's sort of playing out um, in Latam and Mexico. Uh, but thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Mary Walker for the invitation to this. This, this Open Banking Congress and for, for all to be here and share this information. My name is Jonathan Garzon. I'm head of innovation 
and new development of business, technology business, in Secoban. Secoban is a clearing house in Mexico. So let me share something I want to share with you, an overview of the relevant factors that we have in the Mexican banking industry and all the ecosystem of, of, of financial institutions. In Mexico, I think is, is similar to, to LATAM. And then how this open banking will affect us specifically with, with all the problems we have or our, our weakness and of, of, of LATAM. And then I will share with you how is our vision that a multi-tenant ecosystem or a switch system when you can, where you can exchange information in a central point can benefit all the players in, in the ecosystem. So let me start with my presentation. Uh, as you see, the Mexican banking market is very concentrated. I think it's the same in many countries in the time when you can see more than 70% of the total credit portfolio in the company, in the, in the country, is only in six banks, with more than other 30 participants in this banking industry, with less than 50% of the credit portfolio each one. These small banks have, limit, have limited budgets, API teams, and they have a lot to think that they have, that they, that they have to comply with the, with the regulatory and mandatory uh, things that they need. So, there, there is no, there is no time to comply and to have and to compete with this uh, com new competitive scope. When where we have, where, where we have, like we can see in this slide, uh, the fintech ecosystem. You know? Since 2016, the number of regulated and non-regulated fintechs in Mexico grown at an average of 22% per year, per year, according to the Finavista radar that you can see, and we can see. What, which ones are regulated and not regulated. So the ecosystem is very big and it's growing a lot. Nowadays, we have 441 startups identified in this sector. So Mexico is, is the, the, bigger, the biggest market in Latam for the fintech industry. This shows us that new companies are taking advantage of the social demand of our new technology, technologies applied to the financial and investment activities. We are having new players that now can bring us new services with open banking. In addition of the numbers that we show in the, in the previous two slides, we have more entities that are involved in the financial sectors. And we have here like 2,400 entities like insured credit unions, pension credit bureaus, among others. What importance of this one? Our regulation, the Mexican regulation, go beyond only banks or a limited number of banks and includes the obligation to expose their APIs to more than 2,400 of these entities. We're talking about in Mexico about open finance. So uh, we, we, are, we are going to see a lot of challenges around the connection and exposure of secure APIs with a lot of new traditional players and with multi-tenant services could have. That's where multi-tenant services could help. And another thing that I want to add that I think in LATAM is very important is the sanitary crisis we are, we are involved all, all nowadays. I think that we lost an opportunity to help people to understand their finance and to move their money without cash and without being present in presence interactions. And nowadays in Mexico, having published the FinTech law more than two years ago, we currently only have clear rules for the publication of APIs related to ATMs. So I think if we worked before in open banking, it will be very helpful for us now, let me show you uh, the, the three types of ecosystem we, we, we have seen. Uh, first, we have, first, we have the non-multi-tenant ecosystem. Here you have many from the left side, you have third-party providers that want to consume the APS of the obligated entities. These are small banks that want to connect with many participants of the open bank ecosystem. It will be a nightmare to implement each, connect, each connection separately. So one, each third party provider has to develop X number 
of APIs of each entity for uh, to, to introduce this, uh, this open banking project. No? In this case, third party providers can control or will control their budget, discriminating which APIs in terms of value of the information, difficulty of connection, cost and friction, who do, do who will, will they co connect with? So they can discriminate on many of, of the participants can be outside of the obligated entities and can be outside of presence in the digital life of the consumers. From the obligated entity perspectives, in perspective, uh, they, they, they cannot monitor and secure a lot of transaction for many new sources. So that compliance and security control will be highly increased and very difficult. And for both perspectives, perspectives, knowledge and experience at CAI for the implementation and connect connection of APIs will remain only inside each institution, forcing, forcing the acquiring of, of knowledge or experience curve for each new player to be long and repeated constantly without being able to obtain common benefit for all the participants in the ecosystem. Then we have here the multi-tenant ecosystem with only the regulatory approach. In this model, the, the multiple entities, the TPPs, can operate in a shared environment using a central point that we, we are only seeing these, these functionalities, but they can be more, that can verify, authenticate, translate, and switch the, transla the transaction from the third party provider to the obligated entities and allowing all the players to operate with greater confidence, security, taking in, a, in account that only having one API gateway, when all can connect, uh, make that the effort and resources to implement and make future upgrade, then maybe for regulatory changes or technical changes, is highly lower than the previous scenario. So we can reduce the time of implementation and performance test for each entity that want to exploit APIs. No? Uh, having only one direct channel of the communication with all the entities they ask for information is easy to control and supervise. Otherwise, they will all, all of them, the, the third party providers and the obligated entities, we have a lot of control, or will need a lot of control and responsibility in the authentication things and the trustability with each of the entities that they want to include here. So uh, we can now pass to the multi-tenant ecosystem with an open approach. This is very important because, uh, as I was telling Christopher, in this case, you, you, we, one thing that we all need to know is that open banking do not work alone if we want to reach all the benefits of, or, or the promise that they tell us to have more contextual, predictive service, contextual, and be like a finance coach, we need, in addition of the, a very good open banking strategy, we need functionality and technology like, um, um, like automatization, like machine learning. We need all, all, all that technology to take data, transform it into information, and then goes to value. And value will come with revenue. But if we do not deploy or we don't give value to the consumers, anything of this uh, open banking uh, promises will reach us or we'll, we'll have it. So in this multi-tenant ecosystem, we, we, we know that all, all, all will change the mindset of the people involved because you, all, you do not only exchange information, you will receive value and receive more functionality as a service, like how we look here, we can have open authentication, risk fraud management, a functionality like a personal finance manage, management, we can identity, KYC, prevention of laundering money. So we, we, can, we can see here that with, need, need, with these new features, entity can at the same time obtain and deliver information in each transaction and gain, again, a better understanding of the end user. So with this, we win standardization, agility in building and deploying, not only mandatory APIs, but all APIs involved. Finally, I want to tell you that with this open banking view, we consolidate expertise and experience 
to benefit all players, helping them to adapt with agility, gain interoperability, reliability, reliability and privacy that allows traditional uh, players and new players to transform the foundation for a new way of making banking and finance. Thank you.